Well, it's no secret, I guess, that uh, it's my birthday. Uh, thanks for singing. That's very nice. I got a uh, piece of a cookie cake, and I assume that the rest of it is just waiting outside for me to take home. Evidently not. <laughs> my part had a five on it. Uh, I am, those of you who asked, I am 29 <laughs> times two. So. I'm going somewhere with this because normally I wouldn't talk about my birthday. But I, um, it's a time of reflection to think about life and how things are going. I think it just happens to us. I mean, don't we just kind of look back in the year and the years and what's going on and how's it all going? And when I was a, a child, birthdays were great. I mean, I always had something that I wanted. It was very exciting and we looked forward to our birthdays. Now we don't look forward to our birthdays, you know. How'd this get here again? I don't know. When I was a, a kid, they would uh, tell us that the fireworks and the watermelon and everything were for my birthday, and that wasn't very nice, but I, I felt safe. I felt, I felt protected. Life was simple, and I either understood it or I didn't have to understand it because my parents understood it for me, and there was a, didn't seem like anything changed much back then. And now I look around at the world and I think, oh my gosh, what is going on on our planet? There's a gazillion things, so much change, so much change in society uh, in our country and, and around the world. And I read the news and I think, I have to stop reading this. You ever just want to stick your head in the sand and go, it's, everything's okay, we're just going to pretend like none of that's going on. You know, I'm reading about China and they're selling submarines to the Thai, uh, Thailand and I'm going... Why? What is Thailand going to do a sub? What, what, what is that? And they're building uh, military bases in the South China Sea, and we know what Russia is doing in the Ukraine, and it's very unsettling. And then I'm reading, and Greece isn't going to pay their debts. I'm going, oh. And I hear people say, what is that? Really doesn't have anything to do with us. Well, you know, we're all kind of a connected society, and uh, be interesting to see where all of that goes. And when I was young, I didn't, I didn't have this worry, but now sometimes I look at life and I'm just going to say it. Who can make sense of this? How? Who can feel safe? Who can feel comfortable? Who can feel like everything's okay? Because so many of the things that we thought were pillars of normalcy in our world, have just, they just change so very, very much. So if you're here today, and uh, those thoughts cause you to go, yeah, sometimes I feel like uh, uh, it's just not making sense like it used to, then this scripture, this topic may be of benefit to you. Uh, last week, we finished up our series on um, uh, the fruit of the Spirit. We, we talked about, about love and uh, got a lot of emails the last few weeks about things going on in our country, and I just ke keep telling folks, uh, it doesn't matter if you're right, on a, you think you're right about a particular thing, if you do not have love, we always need to talk to each other with, with respect and, 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 and courtesy. Uh, so this week, even though we're going to a different series, we're starting a series in the book of Isaiah, we still need to be those who communicate with each other uh, um, in ways that represent and exemplify God's love. So uh, lots of great stuff in Isaiah. Today we're going to read from chapter 55, if you'll stand for our scripture reading. Come, come. Any of you who are thirsty, come to the waters. If you have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money, without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread? Why do you labor for what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me, eat what is good, and you will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me, listen that you may live. 
and I will make an everlasting covenant with you as with my faithful love promised to David. Dear friends, this is the word of the Lord. May God send his Holy Spirit to bless it to our hearts as we gather in his name today. Please be seated. You ever think about life and think we're advancing, humans are more advanced. Our generation is certainly more advanced than, you know, a couple of generations ago. Gosh, we have cars. Gosh, we have this. Gosh, we know about that. Um, Here's Isaiah. He wrote over 2,500 years ago. And he's saying to the people, why are you spending your money on things that don't satisfy? I mean, those words could be the headline of the newspaper in any uh, of our cities or towns because we are still doing the very same things. You have to ask yourself, what were they buying? I mean, it's not like they had the mall. (laughs) You know, hey, hey, they're opening a new mall. Come on, let's go see what they got going on down there. Uh, You know, they've got a little two-room mud brick house. And what what do you buy? What do you you buy? Well, probably stuff to hang on the wall. Probably stuff to hang on your body. Stuff to keep you clean and smelling good. You know, all the stuff that we go out and buy just kind of different. They were doing the very same thing then that we're doing now. They're collecting all of this stuff, hoping that this stuff will make them feel good about themselves, make them feel whole and complete, and it doesn't. And Isaiah says, all right, if you've come to the end of yourself, if you've come to the end of thinking that collecting things and chasing things is going to satisfy your soul, come. Come to the waters. Because there is a place with our God where it's the real thing. The real thing that really satisfies. It's like getting wine and milk for free. I mean, you don't even have to work for what God gives you. It's a gift. There's a satisfaction that comes from Him that we will never find by chasing the stuff. A few years ago, uh, in 08, I remember getting ready for Christmas. The economy had just um, faltered, whatever, whatever. However we describe what happened. Uh, and, and I was talking to my wife about the need for us to spend less for Christmas on the kids. Well, a lot of people probably talk about that from time to time when there's an economic change in your uh, finances or, you know, when the uh, national economy is nervous or something, we talk about spending less. And that's great. I think spending less is great. Because when we spend less on ourselves, we have more to do God's work with. Um, but what if, what if instead of spending less because we were worried ec- about economic things, what if we started thinking about spending less because of a spiritual decision or a spiritual feeling? What if we begin to have a different relationship with stuff and things and all of the temptations out there in life? Do we really need that next thing? Oh, I won't be happy till I get that miter saw. Do any of you remember the old wooden miter boxes that had the separate saw and you'd put it in there and you better hold it real still? And of course, they came out with a power miter saw and my life is not going to be complete unless I have one. And then, of course, they have a compound miter saw that doesn't just go like this. It also goes like that. And and of course, my life is not going to be complete without that. You ever look at some of these things we just had to have? That next purse, that next outfit, that, that next something. And you, and you go by and you see it, or you happen to open a drawer and there it is, and, and, and you just look at it for a minute and go, oh, I remember when I thought my life wasn't complete unless I had that. And now it's just a derelict. It's just something hanging around. It's something that doesn't get used very much. Have you downsized recently? Oh my goodness, what an interesting experience. All the things that we just couldn't live without all these years. Suddenly they're just loaded up in boxes and hauled off to Hillcrest and out the door, put on Craigslist, free stuff. 
and cars just show up at your house and they just pick it up and take it away. You know, we humans have this notion that somehow stuff is going to make us happy and all the way uh, back in, in, in Isaiah's day, he's talking to the people about the very same thing. Now, I want to ride this for a little bit because I think we, we Americans tend to think everybody has, has, our, has, has a life like us. And let's just remember that they don't. I mean, how many years ago was it that Charlie Fleener and Tim Cannon and I went to uh, Mozambique? We were there to dedicate the chapel that you all raised money to build. And oh my goodness, it was such an eye-opening thing. And um, the, uh, they were going to cook a big dinner for us because we were guests of honor, you know, because we represented all of you. We'd help build their chapel. And, and so they go to the butcher and they're going to get some meat and they're going to cook this wonderful dinner. And so what do they come back with from, from the butcher? Not the brisket, not the tenderloin, not the T-bones, the head, the head, the head. And we watched as they carved, boiled, scraped every single piece of, off of the head of the cow and cooked it and made a stew and fed us and they were so proud. Absolutely, I ate it. Now you've made me lose my train of thought. <laughs> That's Ray Jean King, just in case anybody wanted to know. <laughs> we got to meet the people. We learned about their life. Um, what's the number one reason do you think that people would miss work in America? Hangover. Hangover. It's got to be up there. 100 people, top 10 surveyed, uh, here it is, right? Um, I stayed out too late last night. Um, 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 I just didn't feel like going to work. I mean, we, I mean that's, it's out there. I mean, uh, well, I have some days. I'm just going to use one. I, I want to go to the lake. I'm taking an extra day to go and, and take off. Uh, in Mozambique, the number one reason for missing work is a funeral. Yes, they're going to the funeral of a friend because in Mozambique 12 percent of the people have AIDS without the benefit of our medicine 20 percent of the children don't live past the age of five and the average lifespan is 42 and I can remember coming home from this trip and writing down most of what we worry about is absolutely unconscionable. The very things that we insist somehow are going to satisfy our souls, the very things that we're worried about when they aren't going our way, they are for most of the rest of the world absolutely meaningless. We remember Tom Woodward coming back from uh, Nicaragua on the way there, his biggest concern was uh, this new sports car he had on order. Uh, what color should it be, this color or that color? After going to Nicaragua and seeing people that had nothing, he, he told the team, he said, I'm going to cancel the order for the sports car. I love that story. Imagine uh, canceling the order for, for the sports car. I don't need it. Reminds me a little bit of the story of Jesus and Zacchaeus. Uh, Zacchaeus is up in the tree. He goes, uh, Jesus, they go to his house for lunch. And when he comes out, we don't know what Jesus said to him, uh, but he says, whoever I've cheated, I'm going to make it right, and I'm going to give half of my goods to the poor. And Jesus says, today salvation has come to that house. Because he finally got a different relationship with stuff. He stopped thinking that stuff was going to solve his problems. You want to know why we feel empty in this country? We've been thinking that this stuff, more stuff, better stuff, different stuff, your stuff, you having a garage sale, let me come get some of that stuff, is going to make me happy. Isaiah says, no, no. Why are you spending your time and effort and money on things that will not satisfy Every time I talk about these things, uh, other countries, I get notes from people. One of them goes like this. You know, Jeff, we have poor people here too. You're right, we do. 
and I'm so proud of you and our church for all the things that you're doing to help the needy. The, the women, I guess, are going to dress up in funny clothes and have a work day there in a, in a few weeks, and it's, it's great. It's great. I mean, I love it. We need to do that stuff, but never forget the poor in our cities, the homeless in our cities. There's a bed they can sleep in if they want to. There's a place they can go for a meal. There is a free health clinic they can go to. Most of the poor, who really are the least of these around the world, would love to be the poor here. Another note that I get says this. You know, Jeff, you just have to understand, that's their life. They're used to it. This is our life. And I think, oh my God. Goodness gracious, oh, 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 oh. I'm trying to head off some of these emails, right? Um, <laughs> no, no, no. It's not that America has one God and Nicaragua and Mozambique have a different God. There's only one God. And all of the men and women and boys and girls in all of the countries all over the place, they're all his children. And it's important for, for us to, to think about our stuff and, and, and what we have in ways that blesses others because obviously it just isn't going to fill the aching need that's inside of our heart. Um, you know, the, the, word, the word soul, soul, the concept of a soul is such an interesting thing. Um, I think Christians, they use it twice. Um, are, are you saved? Are you a Christian? Uh, pray to Jesus and your soul will be saved, right? And so we teach people to, to pray and and so they choose Jesus, and now uh, I don't have to think about my soul again until I get ready to die, then I want to make sure that my soul is going to the right place. But it's like we think the rest of the time our soul's just on vacation. At least I think we act that way and, and talk that way. We think in terms of, well, I'm a body and, I, and I'm a brain, and we forget that we are a soul. The reason that all of the stuff out there won't satisfy us is because we are ultimately, first, a soul. The things that we collect to ourselves, they're bodily things. They're human things. The only thing that can satisfy a soul is something that comes from God. And Isaiah is reminding us, are you tired? Are you at the end of yourself? Do you look at your world and you don't understand it? You're tired of beating your head against the wall, tired of, of, of the rat race? Set it aside. Come to the waters because there is something. There is a person that can satisfy that soul. I think we're thirsty also because we've been hurt. Uh, we all get, get wounded. Um, and if you're here today and and you don't feel wounded or haven't felt wounded for a while and everything's going and the sermon's depressing you, I apologize and I, I wish you well and, and maybe next week is, is good for you. Uh, but, but all of us know a wound. All of us know the, the, the pain. And I think some of the worst ones are the times when I did it to myself. The time when I was sitting around looking at some mistake that I made and, and it just kind of lost in this moment going, how did I get here? I want to blame someone else. I want, but I can't. I did this. I got myself here. I'm the one that, that did that and it ruined that relationship. I'm, I'm the one that said that thing to that, that person. So many times our, our, our wounds are, are self-inflicted. In, in, we are all uh, wounded and we feel drugged down in life uh, because of these things that happen to us. We feel lonely and afraid and, and hurt and, and, and life beats us up. And, and again, there's an answer. There's a place for us to go. And, and I encourage people, um, you've got to just keep getting up and going after it. Don't you wish that, that we had just little pills we could give people? You having a problem? Here. Your kid's in trouble? Here. Uh, kid dropped out of college? Here. You know, uh, sick, ill? Here. Uh, I, I just... I wish we had a magic answer and that, and that Jesus was just the magic, the magic man and he fixed everything. But he, sometimes we have to tell people, get back up, keep going. Don't think you're going to find it chasing stuff. Keep pursuing life with God. Keep doing the right things. Keep loving others. Keep 
turning the other cheek, stay after it. You know, some of the most spiritual things, they're not, they're not found in a five-minute devotional time. Sometimes the most spiritual times of our life are, are found when, when, we, when we lean into the wind, when we, when we step into the difficulty of life and the things that, that, are, um, that, that cause us to be, to be afraid instead of shying away and hiding. Do you ever want to like, uh, stick your head in the sand? Sometimes the most spiritual things are when we work harder to fix that relationship. When we go back to that person that wounded us or the person that we wounded and we spend time trying to get through it. When we stay with our, our Sunday school class, we stay with our group of friends, we stay with our, our spouse. We don't have to give up just because life seems to be coming undone around us a little bit here and a little bit there. When I was three years old, my Mom used to let us go out to play by ourselves. <laughs> was that a different world or what? Uh, I was three years old, and I used to ride my tricycle around the block, and it was a regular size block. And I'm thinking, there's no way on God's green earth I'd let any three-year-old ride around the block by themselves. And this big red dog used to chase me, but that's a different story for a different time. Um, this time, I was across the street in the park playing, and some big boys took me down the street, and uh, I felt so good, I felt so happy, um, because uh, the big boys were going to play with me. And we got down the end of the block, and uh, they started making fun of me, and they pushed me down in the mud and rolled me around in the cockleburs, and then they ran away and left me all by myself. I was three years old. I remember being terrified. I remember crying as big of tears as a person could. And I can remember how happy I was. The McDonald's man, just next door, saw me, picked me up, took me in the bathroom, called my mom, and he starts cleaning me up. And my mom comes in, and my mom makes it right. My mom fixes it. Well, my mom's gone. I'm 58 years old. And the problems of life seem a lot bigger than just being stuck in the mud and cockleburs. The mud we find is worse the cockle burrs are more painful. And so we need a Savior. When we come to that place where we feel like it's not working for me and I'm, I'm tired of pretending that it is, we need a place to go. And so what Isaiah said 2,500 plus years ago, God still says to us, you tired of living your life for things that aren't going to satisfy come. Come to the waters. In Jesus Christ, there is hope. There is help. When I was a kid, they, they taught us to, to pray and choose Jesus, and they made it sound like it was a one-time thing. Good job. You said the prayer, Carol. Congratulations. Here's your Sunday school pin. Uh, and and that, was, that was all there was to it. Then you were just supposed to hang around, and everything was supposed to be okay. Over the years, I've come to believe that this choosing Jesus is an everyday thing. Not that our decision from yesterday didn't matter, but it's just this idea that it's an ongoing thing. It's, it's, it's a making a choice every single day for what we're going to call important and who we're going to put at the center of our life. And so I just want to invite you to join me this morning and just spend a moment to Pray again um, and, and welcome and receive the one, the only one that satisfies the soul. Let's pray.